in this section, we're going to discuss inequalities and graphing inequalities on a number line. To begin, let's start with the basic definitions. Now, in inequalities, we have two basic inequality symbols. This symbol, and it's in self in reverse. And in one direction, it represents less than, and the other direction it represents greater than. An easy way to help remember is if we notice this symbol has a larger side and a smaller side. The smaller side always points to the smaller number and the larger side always points to the larger number. So looking at this first one, I can see that X must be smaller than A because the smaller angle is pointed towards it. So that would read X is less than A. Whereas this one, we see that the larger side is pointing towards the X, so it means it's the bigger number. And correspondingly, the smaller side is pointing to the B, so it's the smaller number. Now, I could say that in two ways. I could say either X is greater than B, but I could also say B is less than X. Those are two equivalent statements here. Now, to differentiate between these two symbols, we see they're in the same direction, but the second one has this extra line underneath. That adds the phrase or equal to. So this would be X is less than or equal to A. Similarly here, here the X is greater than, but the line under also says or equal to B. And how would we graph this in a number line? Well, we think about our number line where all the negative numbers are over here, positive numbers are here, zero somewhere. So if we're showing all the values that X is less than A, then you mark A on the number line wherever that is. And if you'll notice, I have a big open circle here because I'm indicating that I have to be strictly less than A, I can't be equal to A. So we use an open circle for less than or greater than, closed circle for less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. And then as I drew this, it splits my entire number line into two pieces, those that are before A and those that are after A, greater than A. So if we're trying to represent X as less than A, then we want to shade all the values that come before A which we have shaded here in red. So this represents our inequality. Now if I want to change it and I'm now allowing myself to equal A, then the only difference is I'm going to shade in A with a solid circle, but I'm still going to include those values of A that are less than it in my number line. So what you're shading is your number line. Now if I want X to be greater than B, I know it's just greater, so I'm going to have to use an open circle on B. This splits me into two sections, those that are before B, those that are after B, but since I want to be greater, I want to be in those values that are after B, so I'm going to shade to the right of B. The next one just adds or equal to, so the only difference is now we have a filled in circle and we're shading to the right. Now those are our four basic simple inequalities, but we can also make compound inequalities where we can say you have to be like greater than this one, but less than this one, and any kind of combination of those. So as we read through this one, we see that our value X has to be greater than A, but it also at the same time has to be less than B. So we would read this as X is greater than A and less than B. Now, both of these are strictly greater than or less than. So we would use a open circle. Here. And if we have to be, that splits us into three sections, those that are less than A, those that are between A and B, those that are the greater than B. So if we're greater than A and less than B, that would put us perfectly in this middle section here. Now the only difference between this and our next one is we now allow us to equal A and equal B. So we would just make a solid circle there. Now our next compound statement has that X has to be greater than or equal to A, at the same time less than B. So we'd write that as X is greater than or equal to A, but less than B. So what that means is A can have a solid circle, B needs to have an open circle because it's strictly less than. And if you're greater than A, but less than B, that means you live in between the two, so we shade the middle region. Our next one switches it up where now X is strictly greater than A but less than or equal to B, so A would have the open circle, B would be solid circle, and we'd shade the middle. 
So this is how we would just translate an inequality into a number line. We're going to do a few examples that involve this, and then we're just going to layer one additional step where we have a more complicated looking inequality that we have to algebraically solve and simplify, and then we'll graph the number line. And that's our two topics for today. So here we're asked to graph the following. Take a moment to think about how would you read this out loud. Particularly notice the smaller angle is pointing towards the 3, the bigger part of the angle is pointing towards the x, and we do have the or equal to line. We would phrase this as x is greater than or equal to 3. Okay, that's great. Now if we're going to graph it, that means we need to make our number line, so we draw our straight line. We mark our point of interest 3, and I ask myself, can I equal 3? Yes, we can, because it did have the or equal to line, so I immediately do a solid circle on 3. And then I notice that just marking 3 has split my entire number line into two sections. Before 3, I guess at 3, which we did include because it's a solid circle, and after 3. And then you think about it, based on the wording, x is greater than or equal to 3, do you want to be less than 3 or greater than 3? Less is to the left, greater is to the right, and we do want to be greater than, so I'm going to shade to the right of 3. And this represents all the values that are equal to 3 or greater than 3. Okay, continuing, take a moment to say this out loud. How would you describe this in words? I think we'd agree x should be less than or equal to negative 1. Why don't you take a moment to pause the video now and attempt to draw your own number line for this problem and then unpause to check your work. So we're going to draw our number line. We're going to mark our point of interest negative 1. It's or equal to, so I'm going to do a solid circle immediately because I know I can equal it. Remember, if it's a strictly less than or greater than, do an open circle. And then that splits my diagram into some different pieces, those that are before, right on negative 1, which I've already included, and those that are greater. So let's think, do we want to be less than or greater than negative 1? Well, it says we want to be less than or equal to, which would be the section that comes before. So we would shade that. And that would be our answer. Now our next one is a combined inequality. It's making two statements at the same time. Think about how you would translate the first. Combine that with your translation of the second. Give everybody a minute to think about that and say it out loud. So here we would say that x is greater than negative 5 and less than or equal to 2. Now at this point I have two points of interest, negative 5 and 2, so I'm going to mark both of them. Always mark the ones that are smaller to the left and the ones that are larger to the right, so negative numbers always come to the left of positive numbers. And now I think if I'm or equal to, I do a solid circle, but if it's just less than or greater than, I do an open circle. So we were just greater than five, negative 5, so that's an open circle. But we could be equal to 2 based on the symbols. Okay. And now this splits us into a few pieces of the diagram. We could be less than negative 5, between negative 5 and 2, and greater than 2. And based on our statement, we wanted to be greater than negative 5, which is over here. But at the same time, we wanted to be less than 2. The only way we can fit both of those criteria is if we're in the middle section. The things that are greater than negative 5 while still being less than 2. Now the only additional thing that we're going to add to this lesson is what if we had something that looked like this. We're going to combine our algebra knowledge from the previous sections along with this inequality knowledge to simplify this into a simpler statement, and then we'll be able to draw the number line. But while we do this, this is almost the exact same thing as regular algebra, but there is one key idea. If you ever multiply or divide by a negative number in your process of solving, you must reverse the direction of the inequality. Let's see an example of this. So if I was trying to get this inequality solved, negative 3x is less than 6. 
I want to get x by itself. Now, currently, x is being multiplied by negative 3, so just based on my algebra skills from before, I know I'm going to want to divide both sides by negative 3, which normally is no problem, but since we have an inequality, if I ever multiply or divide by a negative number, I'm immediately aware that I need to change the direction of the sign. So the sign was originally a less than, but it should now be a greater than. So there's just x on this side, 6 divided by negative 3 is negative 2, and that would be our answer. So this is what I mean by reversing the direction. Whatever order it was in, when you multiply or divide by a negative number, you next have to write it in the opposite orientation. And that's the only key distinction. Everything else follows the same as algebra from before. Now let's turn our attention to the next example. We're asked to solve this and make a number line representation of this set, just like we did before. Now we can see that we don't immediately know where the solution is because we don't have x by itself. But if we recall back to our previous sections, this looks very familiar to things you've dealt with before. There's an x on one side, there's an x on the other side. So our word strategy was to get all the x's to one side, all the numbers to the other. And we're just going to keep rewriting the inequality symbol without change unless I multiply or divide by a negative number. So I think about how do I move the x? Well, I think it'd be more efficient to move the 2x over. So I'm going to subtract a 2x from both sides. That leaves me with just a 4 on the left, same inequality symbol. 3x minus 2x is a single x minus 6. Now we've almost got x by itself. It's just being subtracted by 6, so I have to do the opposite. I'm going to add 6 to both sides to isolate x. That gives me just an x, write down the symbol, and then here we have 10. So if I was to graph this solution set, 10 is my point of interest. And it says I can be less than or equal to it, so I'm going to do a solid circle to show I can be equal. And then I think, do I want to be before or after? Think about where we would shade. Since it's less than or equal to, we would want to shade before or equal to 10. Now we're going to practice the next ones, and here, if you don't mind, I just recognized that as I was typing this, I forgot the x. So let's change this negative 6 times x, 18. That's a little typo there. So we're going to solve and graph the solution set. So solve uses algebra to get x by itself on one side, and then you have a resulting inequality that you then graph. Now think about how would we get x by itself if we're looking at 1 fourth x is less than 2. From our algebra section, we know that if you want to get rid of a fraction, you multiply by whatever that fraction had in the bottom. So if I multiply both sides by 4, that cancels with the fraction and I just have x since it's a positive number, I don't have to change the sign. 2 times 4 is 8. Now why don't you take a minute to pause and draw your number line that represents x should be less than 8. So here we've got our number line, our point of interest is 8, and it's just strictly less than, so I need to make a very clear open circle. And if I want to be less than, then I should shade those things that come before 8. Now why don't we take a moment to solve the next one on your own. I recommend you pause the video. Attempt it on your own, and then unpause to check your work. So here we want to get x by itself. The only thing that's stopping it is the negative 6x. So I'm multiplying by negative 6, so to undo that I would divide both sides by negative 6. Now normally that's no problem, but since this is an inequality, I immediately am, have some kind of alarm bell saying, okay, I need to switch the direction of the side. It was currently going this way, so I'm going to flip it first. That way I don't forget, because I multiplied or divided by a negative number. 18 divided by negative 6 would be negative 3. So the solution is that x should be greater than or greater than negative 3. So we draw our number line, mark your point of interest negative 3. It's just greater than, so open circle. And remember how negative numbers work. The farther you are to the left, the farther negative. To the right are the positive numbers and 0. 
So if we want to be greater than negative 3, we want to be bigger than negative 3, which means we should be to the right, going towards the positive numbers. So I hope we see the only distinction here with inequalities is it's the same strategies from solving algebra that we did before in the previous sections, except we have the one alert that if I multiply or divide by a negative number, I automatically switch the direction that the sign was facing. Now we can solve inequalities that have multiple pieces to them. In this case, I would read this as 2x plus 3 should be greater than or equal to 1 while at the same time 2x plus 3 must be less than 11. But this is going to be a lot easier to graph if we can make a statement just based on x. So I want to get x by itself, which means I'm going to first move the 3 that's being added by subtracting it. Now the only new thing here is we no longer just have two sides. We have one, two, three sides. So what's done to any side must be done to all three. So if I subtract a 3 here, I've got to subtract a 3 here and 3 here. They all have to stay in balance with each other. So I just have a 2x here, write down the symbols as they were. 1 minus 3 is a negative 2. 11 minus 3 is an 8. I've almost got x by itself. I just need to divide both sides by 2 because it's being multiplied by 2. And I, I'm sorry, I said both sides out of habit. But it's all three sides, right? Because there's three pieces of this inequality. 2, negative 2 divided by 2 is just a negative 1. But remember, we were dividing by a positive number, so we don't have to worry about switching the signs. Less than or equal to x, less than 8 divided by 2 is 4. So now we have a simple statement involving just x, so we can draw our number line. Mark the points of interest. Why don't you take a moment to pause the video. Color in your number line, unpause to check your work. Our points of interest are negative 1 and 4. It said we could be equal to negative 1, so solid circle, but we need to be strictly less than 4, open circle. And I think about what are the values that are between negative 1 and 4? Well, those are the values in the middle. So those are different top problem types from this section. We're just combining algebra and then this new knowledge of inequalities. Definitely get started on the textbook homework from this section. And then remember, after you've completed the textbook homework, if you have any questions, do send me messages through Canvas message or virtual office hours. I'm happy to help. And then take the first attempt of your section quiz. Remember, if you miss anything, you can always seek help on those problems before you take the second attempt, so long as you start it within the deadline. So let me know if you have any questions, and I hope everyone has a great day. Thank you.